Welcome back to Jimmy Deville's Garage and episode 8 of the Barn Fine Fergie project. In this episode, Gav and I are going to be fixing up some of the ansils and fitting them back on the engine and we're also going to be making some of the components even more rusty than they already are. Yep, I know that sounds weird, but trust me, it's going to be worth watching. Here we go. Thirty-one years sat in a hedge has given this 1953 Ferguson TEF a glorious texture of moss, rust and decay. This isn't something Gav and I are wanting to remove or replace because this is a part of this vehicle's magnificent history and it puts us right in touch with it. As we look to the future, it keeps us in touch with the past. And it's that with this vehicle we're wanting to celebrate as we aim to bring it back from the dead. Sometimes it is a fact that not everything is savable. All right, Gav, me old mucker. All right, Jimmy, all right, then. Yeah, good. How's the old uh, ice cream eating been going this week? Yeah, I had a lovely cornetta. Cor that's a, listen, that is a step down from the old double doozy, isn't it? Well, it is a little bit, but yeah. You've got to get what you can get. <laughs> you've got to take what you can get. You certainly have. Uh, so I'm late. Yeah. I've just been, uh, I will confess, catching up with the old double boost on YouTube. Ah! The legendary Mr. John Mills. Indeed. Absolute top bloke. Now, listen, if you like a bit of no nonsense engineering, straight talking, John's from the North East, John is your man. Quality stuff. Quality yeah. stuff going on up there. I've been watching John for years, and look, he does lathe work, milling work, welding, meat, teak, plasma cutting, casting. Yeah. He's a clever man. And he even gets involved in a beautiful Sentinel steam wagon. Mm -hmm. Well worth the watch. So uh, not only that, but on his last episode, we got a mention. Yeah, well chuffed with that. Made yeah. my day, mate. Cheers, John. We appreciate the shout out. So do check his stuff out. He is an absolute top bloke. Uh, anyway, on to top blokes. What have you been doing with our water pump? Right, okay, so I thought I'd tackle the water pump because I want to start building up the front of the engine yep. a little bit. Okay, so and how is it? Because uh, yeah. the fan right. left a lot to desire, but it was still rotating, wasn't it? It was, actually, believe it or not. So, yeah, on the outside it looks rough, to say the least. But actually, inside, not too bad. The bearings are good. Uh, it's going to need a new seal. Yeah. But uh, the only thing that just worries me a little tiny bit, Jimmy, is the face. Making it, you nervous. Yeah, a little bit. Where the seal sits. Yeah, so you've got some mating surfaces in there. Yeah, it's pitted, so I don't think we're going to get a good seal. Right. Leaking water pumps is something that we don't want. No. So here's the thing, mate. Yeah. Steady yourself. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> you stood there with a water pump in your hand telling me to steady Look, myself. I need to use a lathe. Now, I know how attached you are to the old MyFood. Is there any chance... This is a big ask. Is there any chance I could just face a little bit off on the old MyFood? You know what? As long as you promise not to drive her like you stole her, make sure the lube's on, you don't want to go in dry. No, definitely not. I'll give you a go. I'll go steady on the old go. Go steady on the old go. All right, well, while you get on with that, I think I'm going to start tackling the starter motor. I'm a little bit concerned about our starter motor because it is seized solid and I do have fear that it's not in great condition. But I'm going to strip it down, have a look, see if it's going to be savable or not. So while I'm doing that, you can uh, go and drive my MyFord. All right, I'll go with me bits. Yeah, please, just go easy. I'll go easy on that, mate, don't you worry. All right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, chap. What have I left myself into? It's like giving away my wife. Anyway, let's get on with my start, my eye. Wish I was in London, summer of the seaport town. These bolts are fighting me all the way. It's time to have a break and do some hammering. Sailing round the sea, I think you'd have some Bobby brother. He may be. If you're willing to put the work in, it's surprising what you can save. But this starter motor is certainly looking rough. If 
you're enjoying watching this series, please remember to share it with your friends to help grow the channel and keep Gav and I bringing you the projects. Five minutes on the old Myford and this water pump housing should be back in the game. If you've got a favourite lathe, mill or machine, Gav and I would love to hear about it in the comments section down below. Just the job. Hey up, Jimmy, how are you getting on, mate? Uh, I have been doing a whole heap better. Uh oh, that don't sound good. What's going on? It's not good. Cast your pretty eyes on that. Oh, that does not look clever. Corroded two bits. Kaput, is that what you're telling me? Uh, in a word, yeah. Uh, this starter motor isn't looking very good. We knew it was seized, solid, and what we thought we could do is strip it down, free it off, get it moving again, and with maybe some new brushes, get it working again. However, corrode away little sort of clutch basket means that uh, this thing is a no good. Right, okay. So First thing we're putting on the track today, mate. Yeah, right. So we've got a problem. Well, we have got a problem, but luckily, I did see that this was in a pretty bad shape, so I have got a solution. Check me out. Go on then, I am intrigued. You are indeed. You ready? Yeah. Here it is. Stand by. There we go. A li little surprise for you. Right there. Perfect. Easy job. New starter motor straight on. Yeah, you'd like to think, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. Uh, this is the starter motor I actually had on the shelf, but sadly it's not for our tractor. This is actually for a Fordson Dexter, and although it looks very, 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 very similar, it ain't the same. Right, come on, what's going so on? So essentially, uh, the motor, very similar, but uh, this housing, uh, which bolts on to our bell housing, um, where you've got the linkage that does the starter switch, yeah. if you have a look at this one compared to this one, this one is essentially further round here, which means this does no longer link up with our linkage on the thing. I'm with you, so these castings are basically different. They're different, yes, but I have a solution for that. Brilliant. Not only do we strip down the old one, we also strip down the new one and put the back end of this, which is all freed up and lovely, on to this. So you're telling me you want to do <laughs> a cut and shut, basically? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm telling you, Gav. Well, I'm going, mate. I'm glad you're going, because uh, there's a socket there with your name on it. So if you get those two 10 mils off there, we'll get this apart, hopefully put it in this. And I can throw this gubbins in the bin. The new starter motor is certainly coming apart a lot easier than the old one, but is the plan going to work? Only time's going to tell. This plan hammer is a little too heavy for my size. With a little bit of jiggling, the two halves slot seamlessly together. decide to use the switch from the new start motor as we reckon there's a lot higher chance of that actually working. Gav, all right. Hybrid starter motor, absolutely done. What do you reckon? I like it. I, yeah. like, I like how it looks like. The, 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 sort of the old, the old and rusty bit. And the new. Yeah. We've got absolutely no idea if it's going to work, but it is together, so it should all fit. Whether or not it works, uh, there's only one way to find that out, isn't there? We can test it, Carl. We're going to have to test it. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. 
You've been on my MyFood. Yeah. How'd you get on? Lovely, lovely machine, mate. Of course it's she, see? She purrs like a kitten. Yeah, so I faced off the old... Um, Pumpy bit. Pump, ditched the old seal, put a new one in, pressed that back together. So that's all assembled. How does it come on? That's not her new bearings, how does she spin? Oh, she's lovely. Look, look at that, it's just sort of nice, firm, feels Gav, good. What have I just spotted there? Oh, so, yeah, all oh, right, okay, mate. Right. <laughs> I, sh I should have texted your phone, you or something, <laughs> but I did have a rummage through your drawers. <laughs> not a place you want to go. Yeah, so, uh, and I found this nice new uh, uh, shiny grease nipple. The old one was completely bit, gone, rotted so, away. Yeah. So I thought I'd uh, borrow that. Well, if there's anyone I want uh, rifling through my drawers, Gav, it's you, so yeah. Fondling your nipples. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this has gone uh, south of fast. Right, so what, what's last left on that before we get it on to the engine? Right, I need to put the actual pump impeller bit back on the housing. So we've got a new gasket, uh, nuts and spring washers, and should be good to go on. All right, I'll tell you what, you get that assembled, and then we can get to this starter motor and that water pump on the old girl. Yeah. Let's get on with it. <laughs> That's the water pump ready to fit, but first it's on with the starter motor. Let's get this lump on. Oh. Well worth when you're putting something like this on, especially when it might not work and you might need to take it off, that you put a little bit of copper grease on those threads and that means it won't seize in place and the next time you take it apart, it should come apart nicely. Right, that's our hybrid starter motor fitted back on. And you can see now this is the linkage that actuates the starter motor and it fits. If we hadn't changed this casting, these two would not have come together, bad times. With this on, it fits. Gavin, how are you getting on, old bean? Uh, water pump about to go on, old chap. So I'm just gonna slip a new uh, gasket on here. And hopefully she should slot Nicely into place. It's going to be a bit of a fiddle, but it normally is. Right, that one's starting. Got to make sure you have the uh, alternator clamp on as well. That's them starting. Then nip down. Oh. I won't do this one all the way up because we don't actually know where our alternator is going to go at the moment, so I'll leave that one slack, and then we went to adjust our alternator, we can put it where we want and tighten this bow up. But that is effectively the water pump on. Gavlar, Gavlar, Gavlar. Do you ever call Gavlar? All the time. All the time, there we go. Um, I did get told to mention the fact uh, from someone that you look like Adrian on Off Bottom. Do I? Someone on the good old social media says Gav looks like Adrian off the sitcom comedy A Bottom. Oh, I don't mind that actually, he's, you know. Well good, because he used to make some pretty bad mistakes, didn't he? Yeah, yeah go on, what have we done? Well, before we go too far, I'd like to bring up this, which I now believe to be called an alternator. Come on, mate, that is an easy... I was messing about with the bracket down here, right, and I've called it an alternator. Yeah, but probably the comment section below has gone mad, telling us that it is a dynamo. We do realise it, um, but Gab was just having a mad couple of moments. I can only apologise for my um, error. 
I will not let it happen. Again. Can you write your apology, a written apology, get those out for good people, please? Well, I will do that yeah, immediately. Good. Um, while we've got this dynamo out, probably, it's probably worth mentioning, this was completely seized when we took it off and it's now spinning freely. However, listen to that. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. It is now free. However, we doubt it works. No. But we are going to be putting it back on, and the reason we're going to be putting it back on because we're only been using it as basically a bearing. The belt will go in there for the fan to keep the engine cool because we're not worried about recharging the battery at the moment. So uh, this alternator, oh, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> this old dynamo is going back on. Oh, I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> right, what are we putting on next? Right, okay, before that, before you were being mean to me, I'd seen you on social media yeah. looking at Fergie models. Yeah. I thought he's getting me a present. I've just been to Ireland, haven't I? Yeah. We've lots all of seen lots you. of tractors. So out. I thought, I oh, know, I'll get him a present. Oh, I don't want, wait, I didn't get you. That's very well, kind. You've still got time. That, that's massive. Yeah, but those models are they're very expensive. Right, so you've got me a present. Yeah. Where did you get this from? Off? On, 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 on a well known internet uh, website. Okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting this. Generally, genuinely, not expecting a present. Can I open it? Don't get overexcited. Oh. There's a lot of bubble wrap. Ooh! <laughs> this! You've got us one of those auxiliary fuel tanks. Yep. These are expensive. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Very expensive, Jimmy. <laughs> did you get a bit of a deal? I did get a good deal. It does look like it might have a few issues, but the one we had on the tractor, yeah, grab it, grab it. It's looking better than that. <laughs> so we're probably going to use this as a base, but it looks like it's been gunged up at the bottom, so we're, but we're hopefully going to bring this back to life. Obviously, I'm not going to find out as it was a present how much it cost, but uh, thanks, Gab. That's very, very kind of you. Yeah, I definitely did get you one of those toy tractors. Good man. Uh, <clears throat> right, okay. Moving on. What are we going to do next? Right, okay. So, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be refitting this thermostat housing at the top here, and I'm going to be putting that oil pump back in at the front. And I think I'm going to stick on this side and work on the manifold uh, inlet and outlet or exhaust, and uh, maybe look at getting that old dynamo on. You nearly said it. I nearly said it. <laughs> but before we do that, you actually got busy with uh, that exhaust manifold, didn't you, in the week? Yes, I did, yeah. At home. I've done some repairs on that. So should we see what you got up to? Yeah. Here it is. A hole has corroded its way into the exhaust manifold elbow, so Gab's on a mission to get it patched up. Fingers crossed, these old nuts don't shear off the studs. There I go, speaking too soon. Manifold 1, Gav nil. undo that sheared stud, it's time to crack out the weld on nut ploy. One, two, three attempts later and that stud is going nowhere. Time to get this manifold on the mill. Cracking job, Gav. The original thread is back in the game. Now it's just a case of welding up those corroded holes and this manifold is going to be fit for the fight. Because this is a casting, it's getting preheated before it's hit with the welder. Now it's on with the gaskets, ready for the manifolds. 
Right, here you go, fella. Manifold. Exhaust manifold, and that was an absolute beast, let me tell you. Proper beat me up. Did it beat you up? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's looking well now. Uh, I remember taking both of these off. Yeah. You kind of need to shuffle them on together. So, do you want to just give his hand? Yeah. Point sure it on. Thing. Sure thing. I seem to remember we've got to sort of do a. Yeah, they sort of intertwangle. In they do intertwangle. Uh, yeah. That's the right way there. That's the right way there. That's it, yeah. I think that's right. Let's pop it on. That is going on. A lot easier than it came off. Yeah, that is uh, a world of difference. <laughs> No hammers involved. <laughs> no hammers involved. That's looking like. And get, get all the studs in. Nice. Right, I'll get that bottled up. Right, so it's now time to put back the uh, thermostat housing on the head. It feels like great progress that there's now a housing for that oil pump to be bolting back onto. We've done water pump, oil pump, thermostat housing, inlet manifold, exhaust manifold. And the good old hybrid start motor. Hybrid start motor, all on. So that must mean it's time for another episode of Cooking with Gav and Jimmy. And today we've got some epic ingredients. Uh, so the problem is, uh, old things like this fan, frankly, they are just too far gone. That's about to drop off. Um, so they need replacing. However, we don't really want to replace them with nice, shiny items, as we found out with the engine breather in the last episode. We've also got ourselves here a new fan. So what we've actually done with these is Gav got a bit busy with his sandblasting cabinet and uh, took the paint off this and uh, give this a shot too. A little bit like this. You came to town just to make trouble Hopping round from bed to bed You got no friends left in this place You got the whole town sitting red You got a truck full of green bags You got brains that corrosive grit is perfect for removing the coatings that prevent these components from rusting without damaging the parts. As naked as the day that they were born. So that is all the surfaces taken back to bare metal in the old shot blaster. Nice work, Gav. Thanks, mate. What we need to do now is get cooking. But before that, here is a little safety announcement. This stuff is corrosive and harmful. Please, don't get it on your skin, in your eyes, or in any orifice. If you do, rinse it out with clean, sterile water immediately. And if it continues to give you any issues, see a doctor, get medical help. Don't mess with this stuff. It is a little bit naughty. Right, that's safety over. Thank you. Shall we get busy with it? Yeah. Let's get cooking. Right, okay, what we need, we need to mix up the solution, which is three quarters of a bottle, squirty bottle of hydrogen peroxide, about a quarter of white vinegar, and roughly a tablespoon of salt. Mix it up in a squirty bottle. You ready to go? Get rusting. That get, and get rusting. Right, let's get rusting. It's simply a case of spraying this on, and the more you spray it on over a longer period, the rustier it will get, isn't that right? That is right. So we're gonna start on here. Yep. Give that a spray, and it kind of fizzes. And it's going to start to turn orange almost immediately. There it is, turning, turning orange. So that now is rusting away. And what Gal's going to continue to do is spray this all over, getting it all rusted down. Yep. While you do that, I'm going to end this episode. Because sadly, that's all we've got time for this week. If you've got any questions or queries, please leave them in the comment section down below and Gav and I will get back to you as soon as we can. Also, if you really do like this channel, please share it with your friends to help us grow. Also, remember to hit that almighty subscribe button in the sky and the little bell icon so you'll know the next time we release an episode. Until then, happy rusting from Gav and I.
and we'll catch you later. Welcome back to episode, no, well, Jimmy Bill's Garage, that's where we are. We're here. He's the finest thing you ever did see. What is your favourite sweet? Oh, favourite sweet. I know what mine is, mate. I've got it lined up already. Mine's also. <laughs> is it? Yeah. What's your favourite, like, chocolate bar sweet? Fruit and nut. Easy. Oh, that's a bit luxurious, isn't it? Fruit and nut? Well, I love my baby, he's a big bad boy. Yes, working man's chocolate. No, I was thinking more like curly whirly, mate. Sweet as sugar. Yeah, until they change the size. Yeah, that's it. Curly whirly ain't curly whirly, more it's a curly con. Yeah. Let's just get to the bare bones of it, Gav. Have you had ever any facial hair? Well, apart from this, you, does that not count as facial hair? No, like stylistically. He calls me his little piggy piggy.